All right, so in this video, we're gonna be looking at the periodic table and we're gonna be reviewing the things that we can know by looking at the periodic table about certain elements. So first we're gonna look at how the elements are organized. So if you take a look, uh, left to right, top to bottom, the elements are organized by atomic number and that will be how many protons that they have. So you can see nitrogen here is seven, it has seven protons. And then oxygen would have eight, fluorine, nine, 10. And it just increases because that is the order that our elements are put in by how many protons that they have. So other ways that the periodic table is organized, you can see it's made of seven rows. These rows are called our periods and they represent energy levels. Or you could think of them as shells of an atom. And then we have 18 groups across. So groups are vertical columns and they help us know how many valence electrons that element has. So in group one, they would all have one valence electron. Group two would have two valence electrons. And then we skip our transition elements. Uh, and when we go to group 13 would be three valence electrons. 14 would have four valence electrons. And as you move over, uh, there would be one more valence electron each time you move over. All right, so the most important family that we've been talking about in this class is our noble gases. These are our elements on the far right side. And the interesting thing about them is that they all have a full set of valence electrons. So for all of our elements here, they have eight valence electrons except helium which only wants to have two valence electrons. So they have a full set. All right, so next question is, how can you tell the difference between if a metal is, if an element is a metal or a non-metal? We have the staircase right here. And on the left side, everything in silver right here would be a metal. And what you have to remember is on the right side, everything in orange here is a non-metal. And that's gonna include hydrogen too. And then all the ones I didn't color, these are metalloids. We don't talk too much about metalloids uh, in this class, but they kind of have properties of both metals and non-metals depending on the situation. All right, so I'm gonna bring this back actually because uh, I wanna talk about the charge that these elements can have if they gain or lose electrons. Our metals, always will lose their electrons to form a charge. And depending on how many valence electrons they have, that's how many electrons they lose and that's what their positive charge will be. So if it had one valence electron, it'll have a positive one charge, two valence electrons, a positive two charge, or if it has three valence electrons, it'll have a positive three charge. And our non-metals, they want to gain more valence electrons to hit uh, a full shell, a full valence shell. So if it has seven valence electrons, it'll one have eight. So it'll gain one, it'll be a minus one. Six valence electrons will be minus two charge. Five valence electrons will be a minus three charge. All right, so this is uh, color coded in showing ionization energy and how ionization energy increases going up and to the right. And our element with the highest ionization energy is going to be helium. But one thing you'll notice is electronegativity also has a very similar trend. The only difference is we would ignore our noble gases because they don't really have a electronegativity because they don't want to attract electrons. Uh, so as we move up and to the right, our electronegativity will also increase and our element with our highest electronegativity is fluorine. So we're gonna be talking a lot about electronegativity in the coming weeks, uh, specifically with our non-metals. So this will be a very useful uh, periodic table to use. Um, and with our non-metals, we can see, I, I did a color coding right here. Less than three would be green, about three is uh, yellow. And then our two elements with our highest Electronegativity would be oxygen and fluorine. And this means the higher electronegativity means they want to um, pull electrons towards them more.